Another uh, trap, if you like, in being free on this journey is a neediness that a lot of people feel. They call it loneliness. Uh, they are looking to the other to be with in this world. They cannot stand on their own feet. And so there is the kind of codependency that's set up with a lot of relationships. It's the two lonelinesses coming together. And the need continues because there's always something else that is not filled. It doesn't work that way. The more you get into human design, the more you are aware not only of your unique difference, but also the fact that you are alone in it. You meet others in a completely different way. If you're lucky or fortunate enough to move into design at a deep level, you can have the experience of two alonenesses coming together two people that don't need the other but can still enjoy them even more you can't enjoy uh, someone else you can't really love anybody else until you completely accept yourself and your own journey as it unfolds when that happens there is a uh, it's just a smoothness because you're not always yearning for something else, you're yearning for the other and to make the other in, in a way that will make it the way you think they should be. You accept people as they are. And because you know them so well, one of the benefits of this, if you, if you, if you really go into design, you have two alonuses together, so much unnecessary nonsense is avoided. Because, you know, if they have the channel of struggle, things are going to be a bit sticky sometimes. You know, if they're emotional, they're going to go through their wave. And you can see them going through their wave. And you can know that it is not personal to you, that it's just a matter of their inner journey. Because for emotional people, and that's 50% of people out there, life can feel very serious sometimes it moves through the wave, the, the, the wave and as it goes into it it gets to a point depending on what kind of wave it is where the world is seen as a place that is half empty and when they're on the top of the wave it's half full there's a kind of a there's a kind of a movement through into a density that uh, people with open open solar plexus don't get to in that way you begin to understand what the different energies are in the four motors um, that are all around you. It's a very important thing to know. Uh, and you can appreciate them. You know, you can appreciate what the differences are. So when you know this stuff, when you're actually out there in it with other people that know and you know their chart, you have a way of feeling connected to yourself and to what's going on around you. It's no longer projecting out. It's feeling what is already there. Got to understand this is about removing an illusion that we hold around ourselves most of the time. In the outer world, it's everywhere. The removing of the illusion is seeing what's there. You see it and you feel it. It's not about making up a story that you would have in your mind that life could play out in a particular way. It's seeing what comes and going, wow, okay. And that, that puts you in the middle of your life. You know, part of this is to be embodied. You know, we're incarnate, we're in the meat, to really be embodied in your own life. That's the only way to be. Otherwise, you don't live life. You live it through the mind. And it's like a very bad picture show because you can never actually touch anything. It's kind of like tabloid. It's nothing that, that can touch you because you don't, you don't work with your own environment. You don't work with what's around there. You're always trying to fix it in this way or that way. It's so boring, you know. The mind, the mind is running the life, it makes people needy, it makes them lonely, it makes them alienated, it takes them away from their own environment, it takes away the joy of life because they always want it to be the way it isn't. And that's what the mind does. It tries to control the life by telling you it could be better this way or that way if you do this and if you do that. So you're consist consistently on the back foot of your own life. If you move into your own aloneness and accept that, more and more comes. It's almost like you become an attractor field. You sense what's coming to you, but you're not trying to change it. You just see what turns up. But it's a solidity that is rarely felt. You know, it's a solidity in your own life that is possible. 
you move from loneliness into aloneness. It's wonderful. <laughs> So, Linda, you've been involved in human design for 10 years. So I guess you've gotten rid of your not self. Where did it go? <laughs> well, that's a good question. I don't think we ever get rid of our not self, actually. Um, you know, life is a process. And it's uh, as you go through your process of strategy and authority and you complete your first seven years, you think, ah, I got rid of my not self. But no, it doesn't really work like that. I mean, when you look at a body graph and you see the open centers and you see the defined centers, um, you kind of see something that's juxtaposed, if you will. Um, you have the part of you that's defined as a student, the part of you that's open, or yeah, the part of you that's open is where you're going to school. And it's how you take those classes, I guess, is what I want to say. So when you first come to human design, you have a not self. The not self is that you're living your life through your open centers and your mind gets programmed to think in terms of those open centers. So as you begin to decondition and, and stop making decisions with your mind, which is full of information that you've taken in through those open centers, and typically it's painful information or information that's confusing, then you stop making decisions from your mind. You start making decisions from your body awareness, whether that's your sacral, your spleen, your emotions, whatever, it's your body awareness and your strategy as your, as your type, then over time you start to ignore that stuff that's going on in the mind. It's still there. You know, I still have an open spleen. My mind still thinks about survival. You know, I still have an open G every now and, my, and again, my mind wanders into the territory of what am I doing and where am I going and what role do I play? But it's, it's really all about being the observer and having enough of awareness to watch what's streaming through the mind and not making a decision about that, about that thing based on what is passing through the mind. So you just watch it and you go, oh, that's interesting because your mind will make up all kinds of stories why you should do this for survival or do that for your role or, or whatever. So it's not that you really lose the not self it's just that it doesn't run your life anymore. You're not making decisions based on the not self. You're always going to have your openness, but you transform it. You transform it into something that brings your life awareness. So there's something to learn. There's some wisdom to be gained about having an open spleen, whether that's about your health, whether that is about survival. Wisdom about those things is what you gain when you when you stop operating. Uh, based on fear, you know, we, with an open G, you gain wisdom about, um, you know, is this really the right direction? Well, check in with your authority to see, you know, you gain wisdom about people and identities and the differences and, and the uniqueness that's out there in the world. So there's a different way that we interact with those open centers and um, but, you know, the mind is always there. It's always trying to grab hold of your life and direct your life and and make your decisions for you. Um, so it's just a matter of noticing what's happening and uh, and not giving it any importance. So thanks. Good question. Mm -hmm.